Hi, my name is Elo, founder of the London Motor Museum, situated in Hayes, Middlesex. I'm gonna show around the collection of cars I've got here. My earliest memory of motoring was actually something I don't remember at all. I was told later on when we grew up, um, this car behind us, this 1969 Citroen DS Palace was the very first car I ever rode in. So when I kind of started collecting cars, my father said, you know what? You should actually collect the very first car you ever drove in, which is uh, probably was about two or three days old. And I was transported from the hospital to the house in this car. Well, here at the London Motor Museum, if you want cars with famous celebrity owners, we have them. This used to belong to 50 Cent of all people. It was used in the video, um, with the, the game video. This is how we do Lamborghini doors on an Escalade, low pros. That was the car. This used to belong to, as you see on the registration, Kabul. Yunus Kabul, Tottenham FC. It was his car when he first signed at Tottenham. Now I've bought it back. Um, over there used to be Chris Samba's car. Down here, you have Gibral Cisse's old car, which was completely customized, one-off, back in 2005. But the cream of the cream of all cars, there's two cars. This used to be JLo's car, used in the video. Love don't cost a thing. And here we have Tyrese Gibson, star of obviously Fast and Furious series and a few other TV films like Transformers. So we, we do have a lot of celebrity cars. We want to try and be the um, the equivalent of Madame Tussauds, but with the cars, so people can have pictures taken with all the celebrity cars, and sometimes we'll allow people to sit in these cars too. One of the craziest cars in my collection is this 1974 Chrysler Imperial, which I have, which used to belong to the Shah of Iran. For the most expensive car I've ever purchased is this little baby here. This is a uh, the SSC, which stands for Shelby Supercar Ultimate Aero VIN number 001. This is the car that broke the world's record for the fastest production car from 2007 to 2010. I just called my wife and I said, I'm gonna buy this car and it's called Shelby Supercar. And the first thing she asked me was how much? And when I told her the price, 720,000, she was like, <laughs> Well, one of my most amazing achievements is actually put together this room, which is actually a 50s room. And why the 50s? Because the 50s was the moment and the time of possibilities. A 50s car was always more or less space age, and the Americans did it the best. And you have these type of cars, cars that were actually design-led, not manufacturer-led. It was not necessarily how much it cost to build a car, but it was design conscious. I mean, it took them years to develop these wings. These are the famous Cadillac wings of the 1959 Cadillac with the rocket lights at the back, inspired by the space age. Well, forget the E-Type, forget the GT40, forget all the other cars I've got in here. The one car that would absolutely stop everybody on their tracks when I'm driving is this bad boy right here. This is the ETV, four of them have been built. It was actually commissioned to be the car in the movie iRobot before Audi came on board and said, hey, that looks like an Audi R8 and we're developing an Audi R8. Can we just put Audi R8s in there? And then actually Audi paid the movie house to put Audi R8s as a product placement item. Regrets, I have a whole bunch of regrets. I once owned a Mura. I bought it for 32,000 pounds. It needed a lot of work. The car was a bit rusty, but it was all there. Sold it to a Swedish guy for 38,000 pounds and I thought I did really well. And today, had I restored the Mura rather than restoring one of these other cars, I'd be looking down the profit of approximately half a million pounds. And I never took that, I just thought, yeah, okay, I'll get another one and I sold it. I never found one. So the Mura is one of the biggest regrets I've ever had. In my years of collecting cars, I've spent a an absolute fortune. The thing about it, I, tend, I try not to think about it because if I think about it, it kind of disheartens you. But the collection is worth 8.3 million. In the future, when, I, when, I, when this whole dream is ended and, and maybe the museum has moved on and 
it's no longer mine. I would like to keep seven cars and I call them the Magnificent Seven. And in that seven cars, I've got five of them here. So two are lacking and the two that are lacking, it's actually the SLR, Goldwing SLR and the Mura. So if anybody's out there with a cheap Mura or a cheap 300 SL Goldwing, or wanted to be as very friendly to donate one to the museum for a lifetime membership, we'll very gladly accept. Thank you.